Let's take an early look at the Citation 550 crash at French Valley, California, near Murrieta. The aircraft departed Las Vegas at about 3.15 a.m., flew about an hour or so en route to French Valley. The pilot made one attempt at an approach, went missed approach, flew the published missed approach, came back around for a second approach, and continued the descent into the ground and crashed and all five people, all six people aboard the aircraft died. So let's go back and look at this route of flight. The pilot took off, as we mentioned, about 3.15 a.m. That could be a factor. We'll talk about that later. He flew en route and we think he was expecting good weather at French Valley because he actually canceled IFR and picked up VFR. And approach station 9 Kilo Romeo, I'd like to cancel IFR, one three to seven. Citation 819 Kilo Romeo, SoCal, 200, 2984, understand cancel IFR. 2984, yes, we're canceling IFR, 819 Kilo Romeo. 9 Kilo Romeo, roger, cancellation IFR is received, uh, VFR officer direction, no weather or landing information for uh, French Valley. My discussion, I got the weather and landing at French Valley when I go on him. Later, he would go back and pick up another IFR clearance to fly the first approach into French Valley. From what we can see from the profiles on FlightAware, the first approach looked like a stable approach. The pilot flew down to minimums and reported going missed approach. He flew the published missed approach procedure and then came back around for a second approach. In the second approach, it looks very similar to the first approach, only he continues the descent all the way into the crash about 500 feet short of the runway. So one of the questions here is why did the pilot make the second attempt? And we'll take a look at that. If we take a look at the approach, there's one approach into French Valley, the RNAV GPS to runway 18. And it has different minimums based on the equipment on board the aircraft. And those minimums can vary by as much as 300 feet and a mile or so in visibility. So the very least he needed was 300 feet and 7 eighths vis. Now, according to reports from the media, the weather was reported as 300 and a half mile visibility going into French Valley. Now, it depends on what kind of rules the pilot was flying under. If he was flying under Part 135, it's illegal to attempt an approach without having the minimum weather needed for landing, minimum landing criteria. But under Part 91, it's acceptable, it's legal to attempt an approach even though the weather is below the minimums. So based on media reports and interviews with the owner, it seems like that this flight was flown under Part 91, but that's something the NTSB will have to determine in their investigation. Now, whether or not it's wise to fly an approach that's below minimums is a different thing entirely. The difference between being safe and being legal. To fly an approach below minimums would require exceptional crew coordination, would require some experienced crew and familiarity and proficiency with the equipment on board the aircraft. It's a very dis serious decision to make. If we take a look, this is not the cockpit of the, of the mishap aircraft. But the aircraft was built in 1979. It was one of the first Citation 550s that, that came off the production line. It had some older equipment, as far as we can tell. We saw some data that indicates the aircraft went under some type of refurbishment around 2003 with exterior and interior and perhaps some avionics. But the only avionics stack that we could see, the data we could see, had a relatively old avionics profile. Why is that significant? That could determine what type of approach the aircraft flew into French Valley and what type of minimums the pilot could fly to. So some of this older equipment, you actually have to interact with the autopilot more in terms of sometimes a little wheel or another dial to manage your descent profile down to your minimums. So it just takes a little more engagement from the pilot than the more modern avionics require to fly these kinds of approaches. So the NTSB will be able to figure out exactly what the airplane had and the kinds of minimums and the type of effort it took for the pilot to fly that kind of approach. So let's talk about the pilots. 
According to media reports and interviews with the owner, there were two pilots aboard the aircraft. We're not exactly sure where they were sitting, but the owner believed that the 25-year-old pilot was flying the aircraft. Both pilots, as we can see, were commercial pilots. They were type rated in the airplane, a 25-year-old pilot and a 32-year-old pilot. Now, we have to be careful. These dates here doesn't mean that's when they got their commercial rating or their type rating. It, it could mean that. It just means the latest time any kind of update was done to their certificate. So two pilots, and look at the limitation down here for both of them, second in command required. That's typically given when you get your first PIC uh, clearance or rating in an aircraft. So that could indicate that neither of the pilots had a great deal of experience in the airplane or in this kind of operation. Could, the NTSB will be able to confirm just how much experience they had. But that experience level is important because what the pilots attempted, flying an approach to minimum weather or below minimum weather is demanding flying and would re require a high level of skill and proficiency. There's another factor to consider in this accident that could have been a potential, and that is fatigue. If we look at flight aware, we can see the flight from the night before landed at Las Vegas just after 10 p.m. And then they took off at 3.16 a.m. the very next morning. So if we back that up a little bit, that means landing at 10.04, you taxi, shut down the airplane, bed it down and get off the airport, that's probably more like 11 p.m. now. And to make a 3.15 a.m. takeoff, you're out at the airport probably 2.15, 2.30. Not a lot of time for rest in between. So the question begs, how long was their day prior to this? When did they come to the airport? How long was not just their duty day, but their work day for that? And then how much rest did they get in between these flights? Now, they were probably expecting a VFR flight. In fact, we can think that because we know they canceled IFR en route and then had to pick their, their IFR back up to fly the approach. So fatigue is an insidious issue for pilots. It's tough to detect, and it's tough to detect the impact of your performance under fatigue. But studies have shown that fatigue can degrade your performance more than alcohol at some level. So fatigue could very well have been an issue in this flight and in their performance, something we can hope the NTSB will find out. Now another question is why they attempted the second approach. So they flew the first approach and reported going missed approach. They fly the published missed approach procedure and then they come back around for a second attempt. It's unclear why they thought it would be better on the second attempt. Maybe they thought they saw the ground break out beneath them. Maybe they weren't happy with the first approach they flew. Something that we hope the NTSB can determine. We believe this aircraft had a cockpit voice recorder. At least the data we could find showed that at one point it did have a cockpit voice recorder. If that's the case, and the NTSB is able to recover it, it'll help us understand why they came around for a second approach. And there were other airfields and airports with approaches nearby that would have made for suitable alternates where they could have gone elsewhere. But there appears to be some kind of pressure to make it into French Valley, and that may be one of the other lessons learned in this mishap. They took off without much gap in between when they landed and when they departed, very late at night, very early in the morning, and then the attempt to go into an airfield where the weather is at or below minimums, not just once but twice, indicating there was some kind of pressure they were feeling to get into French Valley. Maybe the NTSB can shed some light on that. So for this accident, weather seems like it will be the most dominant factor. The NTSB can confirm that. But there are other issues that were likely at play here, and that is the fatigue that we talked about and the difference in when they landed and when they took off and the rest in between and the day prior. And the second is pilot proficiency level. To fly that kind of a, an approach in that kind of weather is demanding. Did the pilots have the experience and the proficiency and were they ready for that approach? And then decision making. Why did they decide to shoot the second approach after having gone missed and confirmed that the weather was bad and below minimums on the first approach. 
Hopefully the NTSB can recover the cockpit voice recorder and it's intact so we can understand the communications and the pilot thinking in that second approach. Thanks for watching. We'll keep you updated on anything else we learn from this accident on this channel.